Jellyfin, in my opinion, is one of the most useful services that you can run in your home lab, but finding the right hardware for the right price can be tricky. So I set out to find the absolute best bang for the buck setup to run Jellyfin. Something that has decent storage and redundancy, can transcode high quality 10-bit 4K HEVC, consumes very little power, and is extremely affordable. The perfect Jellyfin server. This isn't quite it though. Don't worry, it gets better. All right, so the premise is pretty simple. I wanted to find a really good deal on some hardware for running Jellyfin, Plex, etc. Now, really quick, if you're watching this wanting to learn how to set up Jellyfin or Plex, this isn't really a software video. I'm just focusing on getting the hardware. However, I will have some videos linked in the description that you can check out if you wanna learn more about how to set up something like this for yourself. Finding the perfect hardware can be tricky. As with just about anything, everyone's needs and preferences are a bit different but I decided to focus on three things. Storage, transcoding, and cost. For storage, I needed the system to have room for at least two hard drives. That way, in the event of a hardware failure, a potential user doesn't immediately lose their collection of movies and shows. I didn't expect to get the best quality of transcoding, but I wanted to make sure that the system could handle 10-bit HEVC at 4K, which is realistically probably the highest quality format someone would be using. If you're expecting more than that, this isn't the video for you. I also wanted the system to be relatively affordable, ideally costing well under $100, not including the cost of hard drives. And a nice bonus would be that it's power efficient, so it doesn't run up your power bill. It took a little bit of looking around, but I think I found an option that checks all of these boxes. Now, some boxes you don't need to worry about checking off are the ones on your grocery list, thanks to the sponsor of today's video, HelloFresh. Now, I don't know about you, but this time of year gets really hectic for me and my family. My wife and I love cooking together, but doing all the meal planning and grocery shopping takes up precious time that we could spend elsewhere, which is why we like to use HelloFresh. HelloFresh has a ton of variety, with 40 chef-crafted meal options each week. From family-friendly to fit and wholesome, you'll never run out of exciting new recipes. And if you're in a hurry, you can check out the quick and easy recipes and 15 minute meals to get a great dinner on the table in just about as much time as it would take to grab takeout or fast food. I'm personally a big fan of just how convenient HelloFresh is. Every week our ingredients just sort of show up at the door and we don't have to worry about doing all the meal planning. The recipes are easy enough that even I can do them and they taste great. If you want to give it a shot, go to HelloFresh.com now and use the code 50 Haven at checkout for 50% off plus free shipping. While working on an HP Mini PC in a previous video, I noticed that the Intel 6th Gen CPU supported hardware accelerated transcoding, but not for 10-bit HEVC. However, 7th Gen KB Lake CPUs do. I decided to look around for some used systems that featured these CPUs and came across the Elite Desk 800G3 small form factor. Now, oddly enough, I've had quite a few comments telling me that I need to check this desktop out, and now I am. The 800G3 small form factor is pretty impressive as far as used pre-builds go. It has room for two 3.5 inch drives, as well as a 2.5 inch drive, plus it has an M.2 NVMe slot. They can run a variety of 6th and 7th gen Intel CPUs, including the Pentium G4560. Now, back when I was first getting into PC gaming, the G4560 was an awesome budget gaming CPU, but with its two cores and four threads, it's probably not gonna be great for gaming these days. However, it does come with HD610 integrated graphics that support 10-bit HEVC transcoding. And it's super cheap these days. You can pick up one on eBay for less than $15. So putting this all together, if I could find an Elite Desk 800G3 with the Pentium G4560, it would hopefully be fairly cheap, transcode 10-bit 4K HEVC, and have multiple drive bays. I looked around for a bit and managed to find a listing with 8GB of RAM and the Pentium G4560 for just over $40 and decided to pull the trigger. Now the keen-eyed among you might have noticed my mistake, which was that I bought a completely different PC. I accidentally ordered a ProDesk 600 G3 small form factor, and that's because I'm an idiot. And also because I was just really trying to find a listing with the cheapest CPU as possible. The problem is that almost all of the 800G3 small form factors come with an i5-7500, 
or i7-7700, but I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. Now the good news is that these two systems are still extremely similar, with the only real difference being the lack of a second drive bay in the Pro Desk, and the fact that this poor PC has clearly been knocked around a bit. The metal chassis was pretty bent up in quite a few places, so much so that the front panel wouldn't clip on all the way, and the top cover wouldn't stay on. As long as the system works though, it should still give us an idea of how well both this system and the 800G3 can run Jellyfin. But this is Hardware Haven, so before getting started with any of that, I needed to give this poor PC a makeover. Taking everything apart was fairly straightforward, other than a lot of vent pieces on the case. It wasn't the dirtiest PC I've ever seen, but it definitely needed some dusting out. After hitting things with some compressed air, I wiped all the components down with a brush and some isopropyl alcohol and a rag. Reassembly was going to be difficult with all the bent pieces, so I decided to take a stab at reshaping as much of the case pieces as I could, trying my best to avoid scratching anything. I patiently worked at it for about half an hour, and while it isn't perfect, I think it turned out fairly nice. I mean, at least now the cover fits. With the ProDesk cleaned up and straightened out a bit, I made a few hardware additions. First, I added a 256GB NVMe SSD for a boot drive. I definitely could have gone with something else like a 128GB, but I just so happened to have a few of these SSDs already on hand. For storage, I could have used a single 3.5 inch drive, but I wanted to set up a RAID 1 mirror for redundancy like I would have had I bought the right computer in the first place. So I used this dual 2.5 inch to 3.5 inch adapter so that I could install two 2.5 inch hard drives I had on hand. Now in terms of cost, these are terrible value these days, as you can literally buy two terabyte SATA SSDs for the same price. But like I said, I already had these on hand, so yeah. The ProDesk only has one SATA power connector, with the other being a slimline power connector for the non-existent optical drive. As a quick fix, I just used the splitter to get power to both drives. As far as hardware goes, that was pretty much it. For software, I probably would have bought Unraid if I was setting this up for myself or making a recommendation to someone, but I wanted to keep the budget spirit of things while also keeping the setup as simple as possible. I had hoped to use Casa OS to get everything up and running quickly and easily, but it still doesn't support RAID, which is a super bummer. Anyway, I made possibly a bad choice and installed Proxmox. Then I set up my two hard drives as a mirrored ZFS pool, created a Debian LXC container, and then set a mount point in the container to a virtual disk in that ZFS pool. Within the container, I installed Casa OS and was able to get Jellyfin running in just a few minutes. After setting both the LXC container and Docker container to privileged, Hardware accelerated transcoding worked as expected when playing back a 4K 10-bit HEVC file. However, I was only getting around 50 frames per second or so, and tone mapping wouldn't work. Not getting 60 frames per second isn't that big of an issue because most HDR movies are probably going to be at 24 frames per second, but the lack of tone mapping meant that HDR playback on non-HDR devices looked really washed out. I spent the better part of an afternoon tinkering and trying things out, and I finally managed to get tone mapping working. To do that, I installed Jellyfin directly on the LXC container rather than using a Docker image, and also had to manually install the OpenCL drivers. Okay, so really quick, while I'm editing this, I realized I missed one pretty big thing that I needed to get transcoding and tone mapping working. When running Jellyfin in the LXC container, I actually noticed that if I list out slash dev slash DRI, which is basically where our iGPU device is for transcoding, it's owned by this KVM group. Normally this would be like a render or video group that you need to add the Jellyfin user to. So I ran user mod, dash A, big G, KVM, Jellyfin. And then if I type in groups, Jellyfin, we can see that this Jellyfin is in a Jellyfin group, video group, a render group, but also this KVM group. And I had to do that to get transcoding working. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it's what I did. All right, back to the video. 
it's very likely that there are easier fixes that might have even worked in Docker, but this is just how I was able to get tone mapping working, which at least proves that it's possible on the G4560 and other 7th gen Intel CPUs. I should note that I couldn't get the VPP version of tone mapping to work, but once again, that could just be a me issue. So it works. And even with the wrong PC, I feel like this isn't a horrible setup for a budget Jellyfin machine. Although I wish I would have had both drive bays. If only I had bought the right computer. Read speeds were a little slow at times, but I have a feeling that was due in part to the overhead of using a virtual drive in ZFS, as well as just using 5400 RPM hard drives. Power consumption was pretty decent, with the system idling at around 13 watts, but jumping up to around 30 watts while transcoding. While I'm sure it's possible to find modern systems that draw less power, it's going to be tough to find something that also has space for hard drives, and USB enclosures can be finicky and or expensive, so you might end up spending more and getting less. Which sort of brings up the question, how much did I spend? Earlier I mentioned that I spent $42 on the PC, and then I probably spent around $20 for the NVMe drive, but like I said earlier, I probably could have gone with something smaller, like a 128GB NVMe drive, and spent around $10 to $15. I spent $7 on the Caddy, and then each of the hard drives were $60 when I bought them, but once again, I would not recommend this. Realistically, you could spend the same amount of money and get two 2TB SSDs and have quite a bit more performance at the exact same capacity. When it comes to NAS devices and things kind of of this nature, I typically don't like to include the cost of drives because it can fluctuate between users and is very much scalable depending on what your needs are. So without drives, this system costs right around $60. Including the cost of those two drives would bring the system total up to around $180. But what if I had actually bought the right computer? What kind of deal could you expect then? Well, let's head over to eBay and see what kind of deals we can find. All right, so I already pulled up an eBay search here for 800 Elite Desk G3 small form factors. And as you can see, most of these are going to have either i5s or i7s, 6th gen or 7th gen. We can see the i5-6500, i5-7500, i7-6700, and i7-7700. That's basically what all of these are going to have. And there are some decent deals. Like I, I pulled a couple of these up really quick. Like this one here, i5-7600. 8 gigs of RAM, 128 gigabyte SSD for 50 bucks or 50 bucks plus you know, another almost 20 for shipping. But, you know, $70, it's not that bad. You could chuck in another couple of hard drives for maybe another 80 if you wanted to get like two four terabyte hard drives. I actually have this is for something a little bit later. But in this Amazon shopping cart, you know, I have some of these renewed HGST Ultra Stars four terabyte drives for 35 bucks a piece, so you could grab two of these. So $70 for hard drives plus $8 for the screws that you would need to mount them in. So, you know, let's just round that up to $80 plus another 70. So around $150, you could have a pretty awesome little Jellyfin machine that even has a better CPU than the G4560 with the i5-7600. I imagine the transcoding performance would be about the same, but this one might actually draw a little bit more power at idle being a stronger CPU, but I don't really know without having one on hand. But yeah, 150 bucks or so, it's not a bad deal. Most of the i7s I've found were a little bit more expensive, but most of them do come with, well, this one doesn't come with an SSD, but it comes with a hard drive, but most of these are going to come with RAM. Let me see if I can find any more. Yeah, it seems like your best bet to find one of these at a decent price is going to be with the, well, if you want to go down to 6th gen, you can typically find these a bit cheaper with the i5-6500 or 6600, but the i5-7500s, I've seen most of those for around the 60, 50 to 60 plus shipping mark. But a lot of these are best offer as well, so you could potentially get a better deal there. Oh, interesting. This one says dual core. I don't think I've come across one of these yet. Oh, interesting. Okay, this has a G4400 which is Skylake, so not really what you're looking for. This is actually the first Pentium I've come across on one of these. I typically find the i5 or i7s. Now, maybe it's a good idea, maybe it's not a good idea, but what if you wanted to use the G4560 in one of these Elite Desk 800s? Well, I did find a bare bones kit. I found a few, but the cheapest one I could find didn't have a picture, so maybe that's a little bit risky, maybe not. They, the seller had decent reviews. But I also found one 8 gig stick of DDR4, as well as a used Pentium G4560. 
And then on Amazon, I grabbed this Lexar 128 gigabyte for a boot drive, those two four terabyte hard drives we talked about earlier, and the screws, which would be everything you need to put it all together. And as you can see, be about 92 plus 60. So right around that 150, 100 to 60 mark, which is about what you would spend if you had bought that one with the i5-7500. So maybe not the best deal unless you could really find perfect listings and you wanted to piece it all together. You might get a little bit less power draw with the Pentium versus like an i5, but it's probably not so much that it's worth trying to piece all those things together. So if it were me, I would probably just wait and try to find a good deal on one of the 800 G3s with the i5-7500 or 7600 that already has a small SSD and RAM because it seems like you can find those for pretty good deals and then just drop in a few hard drives and get the mounting screws you need and you're all set. So yeah, pretty cool. Wish I would have done that instead. <laughs> If you're looking for an inexpensive but very capable Jellyfin or Plex server, I haven't really found anything that's better, in my opinion, than the HP Elite Desk 800 G3 small form factor. But I could be wrong, and maybe you have much better ideas. If so, please put them down in the comments, because I'd love to hear them. Hopefully you liked this video, and if you want to see more like it and support the channel, make sure to click the like button and maybe even subscribe. If you want to support the channel even more, you can become a patron or YouTube member for as little as a dollar a month and get early access to videos as well as some behind the scenes content. Actually, right now I'm working on some projects here in the studio and you can actually watch the first one of those videos now. That's about it for this one though. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Stay curious and I really can't wait to see you in the next one.